Hello, this is uh, Christopher DeLay again. So this is a new series. I'm going to be covering um, LDAP certificates, as particularly for putting LDAP S certificates on domain controllers. This is something I've come, seen come up a lot of different times, and it's not as intuitive as it first seems because there are different ways to do it. So that's what we're going to talk about. Um, if you have some time, feel free to visit my blog at https colon slash slash xdot509.blog. So I'm going to break this uh, into like a bunch of separate videos so that if there's just one scenario that you're looking at, you don't have to kind of fast forward and view all the videos. So this one's just going to give kind of like some background information on LDAP S certificates on domain controllers, and then we'll cover the various scenarios and some follow-up videos. So this, these are basically what I'm going to cover throughout the series. So the last three here are the three of the different scenarios. There's actually a four scenario and I'll, I'll kind of talk about that here in a second. So going down to the fourth bullet point, deploying LDAP AS certificates via auto enrollment. So this is the typical way that it's done. So We'll definitely cover that. Um, then there's deploying LDAP AS certificates with custom names and renewing with auto enrollment. So um, as we'll get into in a second, some of the default templates that you would use for LDAP AS certificates or domain controller certificates have certain um, subject and subject alternative names they put in the certificates. You may need additional names depending on your environment. So that, um, that section will cover doing that. And the final scenario where you see here is deploying certificates to the NTDS store. So basically what happens is if you have multiple certificates in the computer store that have server authentication as its purpose, um, it only the domain controller will only select one of those certificates. I'll have to go back and double check which one it is. I think it's the most recent, but Regardless, if you want to actually control what cert is selected by um, the domain controller for LDAPS, there is a um, NTDS store or Active Directory, Active Directory Domain Services store where you can put the certificate and that will force the selection of a particular certificate. There's kind of a fourth scenario, which is a combination of some of these. So it's possible you may want to deploy certificates to NTDS store that have custom names. So I may or may not cover that scenario because if you watch some of these other videos, you'll kind of get an idea of how to do that. But I may or may not do that, so we'll see what happens. So here are the LDAPS um, certificate requirements uh, according to Microsoft. So the LDAPS certificate should be located in the computer store, and that is definitely true unless we're using the NTDS store, as I'm referring to it, to specify a particular cert. Obviously, you need a private key. Um, associated with that certificate. You need to have server authentication um, as the application policy or basically the purpose for that certificate. And then of course you want to have the name of the domain controller and you may want to have other names depending on what you're doing with it. And so there's really two places where you can store names or identity information. One is the um, subject name, another one is the subject alternative name. Typically for TLS certificates, which is essentially what we're doing here. Um, if the SAN is populated, then the subject is ignored. So generally what I tell you, if you're deploying certificates for any sort of TLS, just put all the names you want to use in the subject alternative name field and just kind of ignore the subject field unless there's some, I mean, I can't imagine why you'd want to put stuff in there, but just use the SAN field would be the typical guidance I would give. Um, and of course, the certificate that you use for LDAPS needs to be trusted. You need to be able to check replication and all that stuff. There's a way to override replication checking. Definitely not recommended, but you can do it. And then use S channel CSP. Okay. So those are the requirements. Now keep in mind, um, we're talking about LDAPS certificates, right? So particularly for providing secure LDAP. But when we think about putting certificates on domain controllers, there's other things that that certificate could potentially be used for. And I say that certificate because it'd be nice just to have one certificate that can be used for everything. So LDAPS is definitely one thing that you may want to do, but you may also want to have certificates on domain controllers to support things like smart card logon. You may also want certificates on domain controllers to um, support like Windows Hello for Business. 
So when you're thinking about putting domain certificates on domain controllers, think about how you can provide a solution for all of these technologies instead of just one of them. And we'll discuss that in a second when we get to the different templates. Um, so again, the key thing is for LDAPS anyways, we want server authentication as its purpose. And so here's how you would see that in the certificate. So here, when I was taught earlier, just like a few seconds ago, I was talking about having like one template that can be used for many different purposes. And so this is kind of where we get into this. So there are basically three domain controller type templates that are built into the Windows Certificate Services, Active Directory Certificate Services. You can, for a secure LDAP, of course, you don't even need to use any of those. These You could just use like a web server template. But if you just use a web server template, it may not have some of the additional functionality you may need for some of these other technologies I mentioned earlier. So there is a domain controller template that is a version one template that has server authentication and client authentication as its application policy or purpose or what it can be used for. And then there's a domain controller authentication template, which is a version two template that has um, server auth, client auth, and smart card logon. So we see this can be used for even more scenarios. And then there's a Kerberos authentication, which has um, server auth, client auth, smart card logon, and KDC authentication. So we see that even has more um, policies that it supports more purposes. So obviously, if you were going to want to deploy a certificate, it would make sense to try to deploy the one with the most um, purposes. That way, if you later adopt some future technology that needs one of these purposes, you don't need to go back and redeploy certificates. So based on this alone, you probably want to go for the Kerberos authentication uh, template. And there's also the names that are supplied in the certificates. And I'm not actually looking at the subject name here because some of the templates do provide information on the subject name, but I'm not really concerned about that considering this is focusing on LDAPS, right? So um, the domain controller template will put in the sand, we'll put the, put the directory service object with, and I'll put the, the name of the domain controller, DNS name of the domain controller in the sand. The domain controller authentication will just put the do, the DC's name, the DNS name of the DC in the SAN, and then the Kerberos authentication template will put the AD domain DNS and short name and the DC name. So um, the AD domain, like if your domain's like contoso.com, you'd have contoso.com and then contoso, and then the DC name. I actually have requested these different templates so I could kind of go through real quick and show them. So here's the domain controller template or certificate issued based on that template. And we'll look at some of the differences here. So if we go to, actually I don't wanna do all, I don't wanna do all here. And really the main thing we're looking at is subject alternative name, which will be the first thing we'll look at. So here's my DS object grid, and here is my, um, the DNS name of the domain controller, right? And then I can look at my application policies, or enhanced key usage or whatever. So here you see is client auth and server auth. Next is our domain controller authentication template. And you'll see if we go into the subject alternative name, we have just the DNS name of the DC. Again, I'm not really concerned about subject name, just looking at SAN here. And then also if we look in application policies or extended key usage or whatever the field may be in our certificate, we have client auth, server off, and smart card log on. And then finally, the uh, Kerberos authentication template. So if we look at this, we're gonna go into the subject alternative name first of all. And as promised, we have the domain controller name in terms of a DNS name, and then the DNS name of the domain, and then the DNS name, um, really the short name of the domain. And then if we go into our different purposes here, we have client auth, server auth, and smart card logon, and KDC authentication. The key takeaway here is I would recommend that you use the Kerberos authentication template or a copy of the Kerberos authentication template since it kind of has the most names and it has um, really the most purposes. 
Um, the only thing that's really kind of different is if you remember the domain controller template had the DS object GUID. So if you need that for some reason, then maybe you would need that template. But there's actually a way to put the DS object GUID into the um, any of these templates if you duplicate them. I'll, and maybe I'll include that as part of this series because it's a little. It's a kind of a well. It's just kind of some else that we might possibly want to cover. So. Anyways, the main takeaway is use the Kerberos authentication template if you can, unless you specifically need something else in one of the templates, or from a security standpoint, you're like, look, I don't want to provide these other services on my domain controllers, so I just really want my server off for all that best, and I don't want any of this other stuff. But I think if you do that, you'll end up having to come back and later on request different certificates. So, I mean, for the most part, that covers it. I'll just go through back through on this scenario here and cover some of the real differences and then we'll kind of end this video or move on to the next ones. But deploying LDAP as certificates via auto enrollment, that's a typical scenario. The nice thing about that is you just set up the template, you set up your GPO and boom, it just gets put out there automatically, gets renewed automatically. You have to be happy with the names that are in the certificate that are in there by default, unless, I mean, there is a little bit of customization you can do, but for the most part, it'll be the names that are in there, and then that works nice and easy. Deploying LDAP-S certificates with custom names and renewing with auto-enrollment. So this is where you would, um, like, let's say you had some sort of name, like, let's say if you wanted to have LDAP-S.contosto.com, that DNS name in your certificate, well, then what you would have to do is you'd have to manually request the initial cert and then use auto enrollment to renew that cert. So obviously the upside is you can add names that you want. The downside is the initial enrollment is sort of manual. And we have deploying certificates to the NTDS store. So again, this is kind of the most, the one that requires the most administrative work because what you have to actually do is you have to actually go request the cert and then you have to export it and then you have to import it into the NTDS store, the Active Directory Certificate Services store. So, um, you know, if you have a specific need to use this version of this deployment because you have multiple server off certs on domain controllers, obviously you need to use it, but it is kind of a nightmare. And then I guess the fourth scenario would be deploying um, certificates with custom names and putting them in the NTDS store. And that would pretty much be similar to this last option here, except you would. Um, have to configure the template to allow you to supply names and you would supply your names in there, but you'd still have to do the export and import. So that one would actually be the most work. So hopefully as I go through these scenarios, this will make more sense. And so I'm going to plan on going through the first three. I may or may not go through the best four right away, but I'm going to try to get to as much information as I can to help you all make the right decision and to have you know the steps for doing the right thing for your environment. So that is pretty much it for this video. This is just a background video. I wanted to make this one separate so that I can break this up into separate videos so that it's not like some hour, two hour long video that you have to fast forward to get to where you want to get to. So anyways, thank you for watching. If you want to visit my blog, that's available at https colon slash slash xdot509.blog. If you want to provide feedback, you can of course provide feedback under this video. As well, there is a contact um, page on form on my website and you can uh, reach me there as well cool so thank you for watching and uh, i look forward to working on the next video in the series thank you